so uh, here I think I did put a mark Meena ji it was this one right there are thus five distinct sheets whoever has those uh, um, printed pages it's like in my book it is like uh, tw page 25 but I think yours is different right Meena ji the one that you sent can you tell everybody my 21 and it is there are thus five distinct sheets that's okay. what you said yeah yes, yes. so who would like to read amina ji you can read since you okay here uh yeah sushil ji can do it because i asked him before <laughs> sushil ji hmm. he he has the new book no he has oh, the, he, those pages he, oh, yeah, he has a See, I told you, Meena ji, in these days, in COVID time, the friends know more what they have than the wife. <laughs> I can see him better than you now. <laughs> oh. Okay, there, there are those five distinct sheets, the coat sheets, the out, outermost, the vital air sheets, lining it internally, the mental sheets within and still, interior the intellectual sheet and lastly the subtlest of all the bliss sheet refer to the diagram which you gave last time before we go into my, before we go into minute study of the composition and nature of the various sheets let me explain to you the philosophical implications of the term interior when we say that the one sheet is interior to the other we only mean that inner one is subtler than the outer. Again, the subtlety of which sheath is measured by its pervasiveness. Okay, we'll stop here because just for to remind what we are studying. So we are studying the five sheaths or the panchakoshas they talk about. And we are discussed briefly, you know, uh, the food sheath, vital layer sheath, mental sheath, intellectual and bliss. And in Hindi, it was Annamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, uh, Manomaya Kosha, Vigyanamaya Kosha, and Anandamaya Kosha. So these are all Koshas. And Sheet is like a talwar, hoti hai, uske cover. Hoti hai. Sheet is for that consciousness. And that is the center. And this figure, diya hai na, just imagine this pura circle. Ho. They have only shown a pie, but imagine it as a circle. So now what... Sorry, kya hua? Can you repeat the uh, English version of these five koshas? Okay, food sheath, annamaya. Vital air sheath is pranamaya. Mental sheath is manomaya. Intellectual sheath is vijnanamaya. And bliss sheath is anandamaya kosha. Okay? Those are the English names. Um, so now they are talking about ki sabse gross. I mean, they will use the word gross. It's not like something bad gross. Huh? Gross means solid. Gross and subtle. That's where the words have come. Subtle. Sabse gross food sheet hai. And the next one is subtler. So subtler means ye nahi ki uske andar chupi hui hai. Aisa nahi hai. The more pervasive. That's what we have to understand because this, this is going to come a lot. Uh, gross and subtle, gross and subtle. So we should have a mental idea of what it is. So the best way to explain is that how we do with uh, with with our 11th graders 10th graders uh, how to explain this gross and subtle so you you take water okay when it is ice cube when it gets totally frozen it's a solid block okay it is h2o only but it's a solid block so you can see the shape you can hold it and everything on it and you can give whatever shape so that is the grossest so now you put it on at the room temperature, it starts melting. And now if, if, if you put ice in a glass, it is just there. But then if you it melts and become water, it takes the shape of the glass, right? Become more pervasive. Okay. Now you take the same H2O, which is in a water form, you put it on fire. And then it becomes steam and it becomes more pervasive. It just sub jage fell jati hai. That's called pervasiveness. So among the sheets, grossest is food sheet, our body. Vital air sheet is subtler than that. It's more pervasive than that. And then mental sheet is subtler than that also. It is more pervasive. 
that's what the end idea is he's going to explain but um you know sometimes when some people don't have books and all that and when we read it might just go over your head so that's why i'm explaining and intellectual sheath is more pervasive and the, and now just logically think about it our body we can see grossest pranamaya kosha andar kaam kar raha hai pran jo air jati hai na andar apni then it even scientifically you know the oxygen pervades the whole body right agar oxygen nahi milegi brain ko agar abhi no kya ho sakta hai so it it's more pervasive okay and then and then because air is outside and inside both okay when we so so it is more pervasive both pranamaya kosha is both ways it's like a glue that holds us together mental sheath we all know mind can go places that body cannot you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that I, agar mera man abhi main sochne lagi india ke bare mein wahan pahunch jayega right is more pervasive so it can go it can go to chand pe bhi chala ja sakta hai mera man so mind is more pervasive now why they called it intellect is even more pervasive than mind because intelligence at that level means you know decision level and all that it can come up with ideas that are never there before new ideas so pervasive ho gaya ki nahi mental usually hota hai jo hum jante hain cheezon ko wo mental zone mein aata hai if you have to divide between mental and intellect that's the distinction i'm trying to come to so that's why intellect is more pervasive because you are going to arenas like they have this famous sentence um, man will go where no man has gone before that is the idea uh, that is the what you say function of the intellect to go where no man has gone before so that more purpose and then the bliss sheath is the anandmaya kosha that is a, a, in a way how do i put it we have done mandukya that's why we know in deep sleep it's like no experience at all of any objects and when when we talk about objects in the vedantic term it means it means sukshma object also because you know just to remind everybody in vedant the mind and intellect is called sukshma matter or subtle matter it still does not it is not consciousness consciousness is different from mind and intellect so we have a gross matter that we can see touch and all that feel smell all that and then there is a subtle matter and i gave the example of that ice cube water and the steam so just imagine mind as a steam i can't see it but it's there i think that's the best way to put it i can't see my mind but it's we all know it's there because that's how we are working so um this is just you remember the subtlety of of each thing okay so that when we when we go forward we know so mind uh sorry bliss sheet mein samjha rahi thi so when you have no experience but it is a most blissful state okay so that's why i was saying any aches pain anger frustration whatever you may have in deep sleep you don't have any of that and the quality of deep sleep i'm not talking about the you know jisme sapna aata hai wo wali state mein nahi bata rahi hu swapna wali nahi bata rahi hu because even in the sleep there are like you know uh, we have studied in mandukya that there is you know dream state and there is deep sleep state deep sleep state of every jiva is the same you could be a king of some uh, big country or you could be a beggar sitting under a tree in deep sleep they have the same experience of nothingness that's why it's called more pervasive and even all the animals and living beings who have the mind uh, uh, you know expression of mind sab ka mila ke it's bliss sheet okay and then of course the consciousness is the most pervasive but the difference between consciousness and all these are consciousness is totally separate from them it does not get affected by them at all these others are kind of interdependent on each other you know but the but that bliss is or oh, sorry uh, the om or the consciousness god bolo reality bolo uh, many other names we have right these things are i mean this particular concept is different from the rest of it does it make sense everybody 
I think Kamla ji so, has. Huh. So we are talking about not individual consciousness. When we call it God, that's cosmic consciousness. See, when you say, if you, if you say Vedantic term, uh, Kamla ji, there is only one consciousness. वो खाली आभास होता है कि इट इज सेपरेट और हम लोग ने ये बहुत डिस्कशन किया ये क्लास में कि बे जस्ट लाइक अ स्पेस कैन आई कट स्पेस आई कॉल दिस माय होम स्पेस माय रूम स्पेस बट साइंटिफिकली इट इज वन स्पेस ओनली द एंटायर गैलेक्सीज आर इन इट एंड गॉड नोज व्हाट आर ट्रिलियंस ऑफ स्टार्स समबडी वाज सेइंग जितने सैंड के कण हैं हमारे उतने स्टार्स हैं सब एक ही एक ही में है So when you say one, but to distinguish between the two, when they are trapped in our body, then they are trapped. They um, we have to make special effort to merge with that consciousness. Yeah. So what is that effort according to you? You tell me. What what have we learned? How do we? How do I make that effort? Whatever effort, um, karma yoga. Yes. Yoga, there you go. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, whatever yoga you uh, use it, that effort um, to merge with that. broad consciousness like you know air there is air everywhere but it becomes your pran energy once it's trapped into your body it so is a feeling of a trap that's what i'm just trying to what you're saying is true but according to the vedant you are tumko bhram ho gaya tumhari ego ki wajah se tumko lagta hai tum separate ho gaye ho tum ho hi nahi sab it's like just think of wave and ocean if wave thinks i am separate it is a foolishness because wave is there because of the ocean agar wave ko bahar nikal do to wo wave hi nahi rehti hai you know so so just that subtle thing i'm point i'm trying to bring that what you're saying is is true but it's just the feeling of separateness and then you know when we come to chapter 13 krishna bhagwan is going to talk about that one consciousness he's going to ekdam danke ki chot pe wo bolenge ki consciousness is only one किसी को डाउट भी होएगा तो निकाल देंगे वो एकदम डाउट या एग्री विद दैट दैट इट्स वन बट माया का आवरण उसके ऊपर पड़ा हुआ है ट्रू सो यू कैन कॉल इट माया यू कैन कॉल इट इग्नोरेंस यू कैन कॉल इट ईगो ऑल ऑफ दोस आर सिनोनिम यस यस ट्रू ट्रू या या ओके सो एवरी आई आई होप दैट यू गॉट द आईडिया ऑफ परवेसिवनेस बिकॉज़ दिस इज काइंड ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आवर रेस्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर यू नो गोइंग इनटू दिस डिटेल सो नाउ वी कैन रीड Hmm. Hmm. The physical part is hmm. the grossest. The vital air that we take in can be blown out of out to pervade a greater area than that which is which is occupied by the body. So we consider the vital air sheath as subtler than the grass foot sheath. Our mind can certainly reach a distant place. where our breath cannot reach and our intellect can in its visions certainly reach places where our mind had never earlier dared to peep in thus we consider the mental and the intellectual sheets as more and more subtle than their outer sheets the subtlest thus is the atman and it envelops all and none envelops it says the shrutis it is all pervading so the last sentence is very powerful shruti is all the shastras okay and this bhagavad gita is considered a shruti also so basically it's saying that it envelops all but none envelops it that is the most important thing ki wo sab ko pervade karti hai but usko koi pervade nahi kar sakta because it is the subtlest and it is beyond everything okay so there is a contradiction and we have already learned that in vedanta you know you learn by contradictions when you can catch both sides together that's when you catch vedanta you know okay now let's go with each sheet ha huh? go ahead we shall now try to study the compositions of the various sheets first the food sheet that physical body which every one of us is fully aware of during our waking state of consciousness is termed as the food sheath it is called so because it has come up from the essence of the food taken in by the body it exists because of the food taken in and it ultimately after death must go back to become food again 
the substance of the physical structure being something that rises from food, exists in food, and goes back to food, naturally, it is termed most appropriately as the food sheath. The organs of knowledge and the organs of action exist in this sheath. So everybody understood this. We have discussed this. This is the outer body and it is like, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that it exists in food. Well, we will stop eating food. It's you know. So like food, it, it is born in food, it exists in food. And we all know that in nature, mein, Ek janka body is another janka the food, you know, that is like, uh, e even if vegetables you take, you know, it, body of the vegetable, we eat it. And then when we die, uh, it goes back to the five elements, recycled again. It, I think that earth to me is the biggest recycling factory going on for billions of years and will continue to go on. So we, we can in our arrogance say, hum, oh, I recycle and nature recycles you. Forget about you recycling anything, you know? So that's what we have to remember. <laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead. The vital air sheet, the air that we breathe in, we all know gets mixed up with the blood and reaches every cell of the physical body. Even without much imagination, we can easily see how the oxygen of the air that we breathe in constantly forms an inner silk lining, as it were, for the outer physical grass sheath. The vital air sheath controls all the organs of action, and according to different functions it performs, the science of Vedanta has classified it under different names. The punch pranas, the five vital airs. So here, this is a Pranamaya Kosha. And you know, what is amazing is that Vedanta has such depth, you know, even all the modern science, you know, it even more depth in that. And you know that those, uh, whoever knows this a little bit, it's like Pran, Apan, Saman, Udan, and Vyan. Pran ko bhi paanch mein baata hua hai. And I just made some slight notes just for, you know, our slight knowledge. So uh, Pran is when we take that oxygen in. Uh, and then upon is uh, um, expulsion of the waste, you know, when, when excretion system, you know, sara mal jo nikalta hai, wo, wo apan ki vayu ki se hota hai. And then saman is digestive system. So us vayu ka jo function hai saman ka, udan is, uh, uh, it, it gives uh, vitality to sense organs. You know, khas karke face pe jo hai pare sare sense organs hai. And then Vyan, is, it pervades the entire body. It's like a reserve of the prana, you know. So it's like amazing that, and then this is not the end of it, which I'm not going to go into. Whoever is interested can read further. They have um, sub pranas, another, you know, five, I think, you know, sub, like, usko bate up prana. Itna unhone scientifically sab kuch cover kiya hua, you know which is quite amazing when you when you read that you realize the value of it you know that how much this rishi muni had done the research to come up with this you know these different systems to explain us the systems were already there is basically explaining us okay now the mental sheath the mental sheath none of us is entirely unaware of the existence of a mind in us mind is that seat in which and in which enters our doubts, doubts, joys, desires, and like, and they constantly maintain the non-stop flow of thought love. Mind is doubting element, while intellect is determining factor in each of us. Mind can go in its flight to things and places seen or heard. And because of its vast reaches, it is considered settler than all the other environments we had examined so far. So I ex already explained that, that what is a function of mind and we said that the mind is a, which entertains doubts, joys, desire. We all have all those things. And then basically he's saying that how, he's also explaining the difference because sometimes we get confused. Hey, what is, why they're calling it mind and intellect. Now remember, once in a while, uh, when they use the term mind, it will uh, encompass both of them, okay? 
So just remember the context when we are studying that are they talking about mind and intellect both or they only when sometimes when they want to go fine tuning, then they will distinguish between and he, they both have flow of thought. One thought is of all these, you know, joy, sorrow and collecting the data. And when it makes a decision, that is the intellect. It collects all the data and that's another kind of thought, decisive thought. And that is intellect. Okay. With intellectual sheath. The intellectual sheath. In act, in the Vedantic literature, we very often, in the Vedantic literature, very often we find that the mind and the intellect are considered are considered to be one and the same. Intellect is mind when it comes to a determined deci decision or good judgment. The intellect is considered as subtler than the mind because it adventures forth into realms farther than what it had heard before or seen. The hitherto inexperienced are the fields of its pleasures, and hence we consider the intellect to be an interior sheet to that of the mind. Okay, so now this also explained that how intellect is more subtler than mind, and here when he says interior, remember the word more pervasive. Iska matlab ye nahi hai ki wo intellect andar chupa hua hai, aisa nahi hai. It is just more, in fact it is ulta. It can go beyond even the mind. So that is a very important factor to remember here. More pervasiveness means more subtler. Hmm. Bliss sheet now. The bliss sheet. This is the sheet made up of negativity or ignorance in which we exist during our deep state of consciousness. It is considered blissful because whatever be the condition in which individuals are in their waking and dream states, once they reach the halls of sleep, be they rich or poor, successful or disappointed, disappointed, healthy or sick, sick, young or old, all of them experience the same undisturbed peace and bliss. To the ordinary gross intellect, this sheet is an unconscious state of nothingness, meaning nothing of those things known to, known to it as things. In this deep sleep state, in this deep sleep state consciousness, man is experience, experiencing a joyous condition, wherein none of the, their known experiences is repeated. But all the same, the joy felt is positively known. That is, it is nothing, which means no thing. So here we, we, we talked about the deep sleep state. It's called the bliss state. And uh, I think nobody needs to tell us that we feel so blissful. deep sleep gift of God you know. If we can sleep <laughs> because and then somebody was saying that we feel so blissful because it's the it's the closest to God. <laughs> you know, like you know, Kamala Ji was saying. So what is the difference between the meditation and, and deep sleep is that you don't have the Maya Kavaran in, in like if some kids meditation pura hua, you know, right now we when we say me, I'm meditating means I'm pre preparation of meditation. Final to samadhi, we call it when that state happens. So you are you are fully aware but is completely blissful because you have disconnected from the world. You have made your mind disconnected from the world. Mm -hmm. Now the, the most important one. Yes. Go ahead. Shilji. The surplus of all is the life center in us, which is the core of this five sheet structure. The five layers of matter discussed above, along with the eternal life center as its core, together constitute the spiritual, spiritual physical structure of you and me. The clearer and purer are mental and intellectual sheets. The greater is the manifested consciousness exhibited by the organisms. The mind and intellect are almost absent in stone life and there is no awareness in them at all. In the plant life, Vedanta claims a rudimentary mind and intellect and hence in that kingdom we see a percentage of awareness in comparison to the dull and inner state of the stone life. 
much more clear and developed is the mind and the intellect of the animals and so they are definitely more aware the spring development of course is in the man okay so here there's a lot to but i think we have already discussed that if consciousness is everywhere then then what if the expression of it is different in different forms of of matter so if it is you know stone life it is just like i think meena ji was saying the other day it is the existent part is there sat is there but chit is not developed or mind is not developed and uh, in and then as we go from the vegetable kingdom or plant kingdom to animals we can see that plant may they respond so there is a thoda sa uh, touch of mind bol do is there or subtle body is there and then animals may we see different varieties but we all know without fail that human intellect may the expression is the highest you know and then he's going to explain in the next paragraph that how when the so mind and intellect is um, where the consciousness expresses that's another very important important point for this class to grasp as we go forward in deeper vedanta that uh, consciousness is everywhere how does it express in humans through our mind and intellect okay this so so how do i give that example uh I guess the connection is through that. ऐसा सोच सकते हैं हम लोग जैसे हम लोग का कंप्यूटर है तो उसमें मैं वो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी जहाँ से कनेक्ट करती हूँ फिर वो पूरे में फैलती है वैसे ही कॉन्शियसनेस कम्स थ्रू अवर माइंड एंड इंटेलेक्ट ना जस्ट इमेजिन माइंड एंड इंटेलेक्ट इज नॉट ए सटल मैटर राइट एवरीबडी अग्रीज इट्स लाइक अ ऑलमोस्ट लाइक अ ट्रांसपेरेंट थिंग नाउ इन माइंड एंड इंटेलेक्ट इट गोज थ्रू इट अगर माइंड एंड इंटेलेक्ट में डर्ट होएगी तो उसका एक्सप्रेशन प्रॉब्लम हो जाएगा ना फिर एंड द बेस्ट एग्जांपल इज अ क्लीन ग्लास इफ आई हैव अ हाउस एंड आई हैव अ ग्लास एंड द सन शाइन इज कमिंग थ्रू इट जितना वो क्लीन ग्लास होएगा उतना ही वो सन वैसे का वैसे आएगा मेरे पास उसकी किरणें लेकिन अगर वो गंदा होगा तो उसकी किरणें ठीक नहीं आएंगी ना थिंक ऑफ इट एज कॉन्शियसनेस consciousness is coming through our mind and it is our dirt of our mind that makes it you know our our life like problematic the cleaner we have our mind the expression of that consciousness will be better and better and in the same sense sages it's pardarshi means it is like transparent that's why they are called god upon this earth because wo sun ka reflection jaise pura ka pura aa gaya वैसे ही और क्लीन मिरर समझ लो क्लीन क्लीन मिरर में इट इज शाइन यू नो इट इज शाइनिंग थ्रू द मिरर बट इट स्टिल जस्ट लाइक अ सन एंड दैट्स हाउ यू कंपेयर टू टू द सेम सेंसेजेस सो आई होप दिस कांसेप्ट इज क्लियर ओके दैट्स व्हाट आई गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन गो अहेड सुशील जी द प्योर ऑफ द माइंड एंड इंटेलेक्ट द ब्राइटर विल बी द बीम्स ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस दैट शूट आउट फ्रॉम द इंडिविजुअल एंड द सेंट आर द प्रॉफिट is one who has the maximum awareness manifest in him the shruti says brahma with brahmaiva bhavati knower of the brahman becomes brahman to realize the pure awareness which is the atman or the life center is the goal of life the culmination of evolution the fulfillment of super man put so here is a goal unhone bata diya aur ye brahma brahma with brahma eva bhavati and they translated to the knower of brahman becomes a brahman so we have you know this is the one goal that when you reach that goal you become that okay like i think tejoman anand ji was saying one time in his lecture he said hey when you go to a computer course do you become a computer after you re, uh, finish the course no you don't in the worldly things that doesn't happen <laughs> you are but in the in this adhyatmik uh, thing jo tumhara goal hai tum wohi ban jate ho fir you know that's the difference between adhyatmik and the worldly thing i thought that was a brilliant example so here he is saying that once you know or a brahman become brahman and i think the best example was this uh, salt doll is saying oh, where is my origin where is my origin origin and it start going towards the ocean to find the origin the salt doll huh 
made of salt. So when it goes to the ocean, what happens? It melts and becomes the ocean. So that's what I love that example. Such a beautiful example. Hmm. Though we are in reality this life center alone, we in a misunderstanding of our real nature superimpose our identity on one or the other of the outer developments grown into the three bodies and claim to ourselves the different individualities. Thus, at one moment we are body, as when we say, I have grown dark, etc. At another moment we, ad we identify ourselves without mind, as when we say, I am doubtful. With our mind, actually. Um, with our, we, we identify ourselves with our mind. So, okay, go ahead. No, this one says without. But actually it's with, because he's talking about how we identify, oh, there may be a typo in, in your, sometimes they have it, yeah. Hmm. In my book is with, and that sounds more appropriate, huh? Yeah, it is with our, hmm. with our mind. Hmm. Go ahead, Sushilji. As when we say, I am doubtful, I am agitated, I am worried, etc. Yet another time, we consider ourselves to be the intellect. As when we say, I am dull, I have an idea, etc. So here, you know, you see that little um, thing at the bottom, Sushilji? You have yes. that? So read that because we have done Mandukya. So that who, all the Mandukya students over here will, will understand this, what he's saying. Huh? Read that. The ego that arises in us when we identify with the physical body is called the Vishwa. With the subtle body is called the Tejasa. And with this causal body, the uh, Pragnya. Pragnya, yeah. More, mm -hmm. more details regarding this can be had in Sri Swamiji's discourses on Mandukya with Karika published in the Delhi Yajna. So, so here now this is too heavy, but I will, whoever has not done Mandukya with us, I'll just explain a little bit and then we can stop today because I don't want to burden everybody with too much. So basically he's saying that how that life center, that Om, that is what, who we are, okay? But unfortunately, because of these five sheets, we identify with any of the sheets and then we express ourselves and we believe that that's what we are. So he's saying when I'm identifying with the body, then I'll say, oh, I have grown dark, you know, I went in the sun and I have kali pad gayi hu, you know? Or um, then sometimes we identify with the manomai kosha and we say, oh, I'm, I'm so agitated today. And, and what Shruti is saying, hey, you are not agitated, your mind is. Hey, you are not turned black, your body is. That's what they are reminding us, okay? And then, and then, uh, or when we, we have, oh, I have such a great idea, you know, my idea, this, that, thoda ego bhi aja hai usme. He's saying, no, this is your intellect is just coming up with it. You are the, not your intellect. That's what he's saying. And here in Mandukya, the, the way they explain is that you have these three experiences in 24 hours, waking state, dream state, and the deep sleep state. And you always think that, oh, I'm a waker now. I have to deal with the world. Abhi mein, you know, when I'm dreaming, then I become the dreamer. I'm seeing the dream. And then in the deep sleep, I'm enjoying the bliss. But what Mandukya is saying, you are none of the three. You are actually that Turiya state, which that Turiya state pervades all the states. Without that Turiya, you have nothing. These are just three different experiences, but you are not that. That's what is reminding us over here again. So this is just giving a heavy dose of Vedanta before we go in. I think if we understand this, our study of uh, this Upanishad, Katopanishad will become very fruitful. Because then if these concepts, when we grasp them properly, then we will understand what Yamraj is going to tell Nachiketa. Because he's going to tell in his own words. But whole idea is, we kind of know it intellectually now, but it had to seep through us deeper and deeper and deeper. And then like Krishna Bhagwan say, you have to get established in that knowledge and then work from that. So that's the whole goal. So we'll stop here today.
pretty much done 1230, 1223. So anybody has this particular question on this topic, then they can say it now. Or any comment or add a point to what Swamiji is saying. Anyone? You think this this studying the five sheets was helpful before we go in? Yeah, you can just shake your head. Okay, I see thumbs up from Neeluji. <laughs> okay, good. I thought it was very interesting. Yeah, but I know in the new book they don't have it, but uh, old one they do. The way I studied was the other way, but this is very interesting mm -hmm. because what we uh, what I learned was you have. Uh, Annamaya kosha, which is your body. Mm -hmm. And then when you die, the Annamaya and Pranamaya, they finish. And then the Sukhra Sharir, which is the other three, they go. And they form another body. True, true. That is, that is, this is not disputing that, Joe. This is not, this is just telling you while you are alive what you have. But what you are saying, it that will come actually already Achuka hai thoda about chapter 2 mein. Or abhi aage bhi aega, Bhagavad Gita mein. So, so one is like big, which is the body, mm -hmm. and other is small. It's, it's subtle is other way. Yes, that's, uh, see, everybody makes that mistake. Because when we were studying too, in fact, I, I asked my teacher when I was a student, and I was like, this was very early in my in my thing, and I said, uh, uh, auntie, this looks, this this has a problem, this, this uh, figure, because why they had a pie? It should be a circle and she said uma good job uma you are thinking it it is a circle but then they just showed it as a pie but you have to think it as a circle because it's pervading like this right yeah so so what you are saying is true that this is a very important point that we miss because everybody has made that mistake in the beginning but it's more pervasive you know, so Swamiji explained that so well. You know? Yeah, so good point. Mm -hmm. So, Maji, uh, mm -hmm. this diagram that we are looking at, mm -hmm. the outest, the food sheet mm -hmm. is the most pervasive and the most. No, subtle. ulta. Fu ulta. It is ulta. No, sorry, I mean, yeah. ah. As you go inside, yes, yes, the pervasiveness yes. increases mm -hmm. and the subtleness increases. Mm -hmm. True. Yes. Yes. And then to me, that, that example of the H2O is the best one. You know, that same matter can become more pervasive depending on the condition. So it's like when, when they, in the beginning, when they used to say that mind is a subtle matter, we didn't understand what they were saying. We always thought that mind matter can be made. Right? But when they talked about consciousness and rest, everything is matter in Vedanta. And even, even science uh, will agree with it. Because right now, they only are concerned with the physical world. All the whole study, karte hai, astronomy, astro kya bolte hai, jitta bhi wo space or falana, dikra, it's all physical world. They never talk about consciousness. I was telling you that now the consciousness studies have come in because they are defining it slowly by antimatter, dark matter, something you cannot see and yeah, wo hai. they're trying to so hard to give the names, you know. But apne Vedant wale to wo das kadam aage the. They said consciousness is the main thing. And then from that, everything else comes. And then the whole uh, thing about Om, Om is a vibration, right? So when, when that singularity se mein vibration shuru hua, vibration se matter manifest hua, right? Abhi, you guys are more engineers and scientists over here. You know better. I know a little bit, but I can connect it now. That, you know, and that's why they say, and somebody was saying that when we look up in the sky, we look at stars and this and that. Wo hamari drishti ka dosha because mainly to emptiness hai pe. Pure universe mein matter is very uh, less. Emptiness is much bigger, you know. So that's where it's all pervasive. You know, we, we, abhi abhi log, science wale bhi bolte nahi hai ki it's empty. 
बोलते हैं वहाँ डार्क मैटर है एंटी मैटर है ये मैटर पता नहीं क्या क्या नाम दिया है उसको गॉड मै गॉड सब्सटेंस आई डोंट नो मे बी जो नोज दिस जो रीड्स ऑल दिस थिंग्स दे कॉल इट सम नाम दिया है उसको बिकॉज दे कुड नॉट the i attended one physics lecture mm. so somebody uh, i think in atnt long time ago mm. they found those television lines which were disturbance they are the nod in the universe which mm-hmm. is the vibrations in the universe mm-hmm. so they have designed filters to go back in time as to how far back they can go by filtering these vibrations mm-hmm. and there are these big telescopes all over the world and they have reached like within a second or fraction of a second of the big bang mm-hmm. and so the question in that talk session of physics was what is beyond that sound as to when the big bang happened what is beyond beyond that? it yes and we cannot figure it out because they are reaching the level that they can filter anymore mm-hmm. so what was before the big bang occurred mm-hmm. that's the whole science yep talk. and vedanta has the answer you know and then when you when you study systematically the vedanta then it goes into your head how scientific it is also because like the sarva priyanand ji was saying that uh, vedanta is not op- opposing science or anything it, it definitely goes in hand in hand with it and you can explain all the scientific concept through vedanta also you know but people just think that oh science is separate and this this uh, philosophy is different but in our vedanta it is it is totally together you know any also other another hmm. way of hmm. the way he explained the sheets now i think about it physical body is limited you are wherever you yes. sitting your your hmm. mind you can travel anywhere you want mm-hmm. so it can, it can go much more see how and how beautifully explained and it is very logical it is totally with the science it's not not opposed to it you know physical body is the most limited and you know when you watch those nde shows they will they tell you that you know once they quit the body and they went into that subtle world all of a sudden they felt so free and they could connect to the universe and and they felt oh my god body is so limiting yani ki humko ek room se dusre room mein jaane mein bhi kabhi kabhi takleef hoti you know so limiting you know but uh, we we know that we are not that so why worry right okay i'm going to uh, close the class and at the discussion time whoever wants to stay and we can discuss on any topic spiritual topics so i'm going to do the closing prayer om sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu मा कचिदुख भाग भवे हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम